I'm a 17-year-old professional YouTuber and thumbnail designer with millions of views across my two channels. And I interviewed four of the best thumbnail designers on YouTube, including my personal designer on this channel, to put together a comprehensive guide on creating the most clickable thumbnails in any niche. First, what even makes a good thumbnail? Well, from a very basic standpoint, a good thumbnail is one that gets people to click on your video. The effectiveness of a thumbnail in this light can be roughly measured with a metric called CTR, which stands for click-through rate. In YouTube Studio, you can find this by going into a video's analytics and looking for the reach category. A high CTR means that a high percentage of people who saw your thumbnail ended up clicking on your video. As a result, the general consensus amongst most YouTubers is that a high CTR means that you had a good thumbnail. However, Meta, one of the designers that I interviewed, disagrees with this common consensus. And I agree with this. This is because YouTube promotes successful videos to wider audiences as they grow. For example, with my editing video, YouTube started by showing the video only to my audience of loyal subscribers which is a group that is almost guaranteed to be interested in my content. This led to a high initial CTR on my video, but as it gained more and more views, it began to be shown to a wider audience of viewers with a lower chance, but still a possibility of being interested in my video. This led to the CTR dropping to almost half of what it once was, except it also had over 100,000 views. Looking at just the CTR, you would think the thumbnail was unsuccessful because it's relatively low. But in this case, the key indicator of success for this video was the 1.2 million impressions and over 100,000 views, which both indicate that the thumbnail did a good job. So take your video CTR with a grain of salt. But let me get back to that initial question. What actually makes a good thumbnail? All of the designers that I interviewed agreed that a thumbnail that just looks nice isn't necessarily a good thumbnail, as clickability is also often determined by how digestible a thumbnail concept is to a viewer. Digestibility in this case just means that it's simple and not super complicated. Super complex thumbnails with tons of intricate details often lack elements that stand out, which is important to note because you want your thumbnails to stand out to get a lot of clicks. In contrast, a thumbnail with only a few elements makes it easy for a viewer's eye to be drawn to one or two things on the thumbnail and as a result have it stick out compared to other videos. Additionally, YouTube thumbnails are often shown at very small sizes like on a mobile phone or just on a little sidebar. In these cases, tiny complex details in a thumbnail are practically unnoticeable in such a small small image, so you're always better off simplifying your thumbnail as much as possible while still retaining your initial concept. Some of the designers that I interviewed mentioned the three element rule, which is the idea that good thumbnails are always simplified down to three main elements in order to attract more clicks. But I personally just push my thumbnail designers and consulting clients to simplify their thumbnails as much as they can, without worrying too much about arbitrary numbers. Basically, a thumbnail shouldn't be finished when you have nothing left to add. A thumbnail is finished when you have nothing left to remove. Here's a before and after on the thumbnail for my voiceovers video, where we started with a really busy concept and ended up simplifying to something, well, simpler. A good thumbnail also makes sense in the context of your video's title. There are a few commonly used thumbnail concepts that pop up all around YouTube, like, for example, a before and after comparison. I often see creators try to take these concepts and then throw them at their video like they're forcing a square peg into a round hole. Just because a concept works for one style of video doesn't mean it's gonna work for another. For example, take this first concept that we came up with for my script writing video, and compare it to the one that we eventually used. The first one we found didn't really make much sense in the context of video. A few of the interview designers also talked about the use of colors in a clickable thumbnail. Using contrasting colors, especially ones that are complementary to each other, is a great way to draw attention to your thumbnail and help it stick out. However, it's important to not go so overboard with this that your thumbnail loses its realism. For example, picture a thumbnail for my voiceovers video with a bright red microphone on a background. Would it stick out? Definitely. But would a bright red microphone make sense to the viewer and would it even look like a microphone? Probably not. I've been tempted to change the colors on my thumbnails in the past in favor of more contrast, like for example, this video on my game dev channel, but eventually circled back to the most realistic yet still contrasting colors that I find. Text is something that I often see used incorrectly in a lot of thumbnails. Most of the designers that I interviewed mentioned this as well. According to my current designer, text can either make or break a thumbnail. Another designer that I interviewed mentioned that text can be used sparingly and in a simple fashion to advance the story of a thumbnail. In both his and my opinions, a viewer should be able to look at a thumbnail and mostly know what the video is about without even seeing the title. In my video titled How to Edit Viral Videos, my designer and I decided it made sense to add text to add more context to the thumbnail. In our heads, the thumbnail went from a regular editing tutorial about Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve to an editing tutorial about blowing up a video with good editing. Another way, instead of adding text to add that bit of context, would have been maybe a view counter or a YouTube logo or just anything else in that realm, but we saw text as the clear 
cleanest and most simple way to get our message across. I personally see a lot of thumbnails that use text to just restate the title, which isn't the right way to use text in the thumbnail 99% of the time, as it doesn't really do anything to add context or advance the story of the thumbnail when the title is mere pixels away from it on the screen. In general, just remember to keep everything simple with thumbnails. A couple of the designers that I interviewed thought it'd be a smart idea to make a thumbnail before the video and not the video before the thumbnail like most people do. This is because you're basically trapped by the first 30 seconds or so of your video when you're coming up with thumbnail concepts. Because if you make a thumbnail that portrays something different than your intro, viewers will likely be disappointed and feel clickbaited when they click on your video and then they'll just leave. In contrast, if you come up with a thumbnail concept first, it's really easy to base your edit off of it and have everything work out a lot better. However, I personally don't care all that much and just find it easier to make the thumbnail after I get the video from my editor, but it's just really all up to personal preference. Regardless though, for your thumbnails to be effective, you'll need to combine them with a high quality video edit. Beats.io is a browser-based video editor with tons of crazy AI tools that make editing faster and more accessible to content creators wanting to make said high quality edits. I've partnered with them for this video because I've personally caught wind of their software in the past and really see this as a useful investment for you guys if you're looking to make high quality videos as fast as possible. Veed, of course, has your standard set of features for a video editor, allowing you to cut and move footage on a timeline, apply transitions, choose backgrounds, colors, fonts, and graphics, add subtitles, pick music and stock footage, and even edit a video from a template if you so choose. However, where Veed really shines is in its innovative AI tools that make creating videos really fast and easy for beginners and professionals alike. Want retention boosting subtitles in your video? It only takes a few clicks in Veed. Find out your audio is bad and don't want to re-record? Just use Veed's audio enhancement tools to instantly fix your voiceover. Want to remove the background of a video? Once again, it's just a couple clicks away. Want to live stream, conduct an online interview, collaborate on a video live with another person, automatically remove silence, get rid of a video's watermark, find stock videos, music, and sounds, generate a voiceover with AI, download a video from a social media app like Instagram or Twitch, or do literally anything that you can do with a full set of video creation tools costing you a ton of money, except this time Time, it's just all contained within a single website in your browser and a subscription that's way more affordable than something like the Adobe Creative Suite. And yep, you guessed it, Veed has you covered. Obviously, because they're sponsoring me, I'm getting paid to say good things about Veed, but in the past, I've been really impressed with some of the things this tool can do, and I've even recommended it to a few creators. So if you're interested, sign up with my link in the description to try Veed for free today. And if you end up buying one of their paid plans through my link, I'll even take a significant cut. So go do that. In the same realm as video editing tools, AI tools have become very popular popular in recent months. Some of the designers that I interviewed commented on generative AI like Midjourney, saying that they personally take advantage of it as a starting point for more realistic thumbnails or just as a way to get inspired. Here's an example of one of these designers generating an image to transform into a thumbnail for my video about voiceovers. I didn't end up using it for my voiceovers video, but it was impressive nonetheless. And I think there's a ton of potential for generative AI to be useful when making thumbnails. However, AI is not just limited to generating images for thumbnails. ChatGPT and other AI chatbots are great for gathering inspiration when you're designing a thumbnail. Simply open one up and ask what are some thumbnail concepts for a video about whatever. Sometimes I find this useful when designing thumbnails for freelance clients, but personally don't rely on it super heavily because AI isn't quite to a point where I can make thumbnails as good as humans yet. One of the designers that I interviewed also noted that AI is not only useful in the process of coming up with thumbnail concepts, but also when physically creating them. A lot of mainstream graphic design programs have integrated AI in some form or fashion to make the process of creating stuff way easier. For example, Photoshop's generative fill, which is just so impressive. Designs that once took hours to think of and create can now be generated in seconds. Meaning if you can learn to harness the power that comes with using AI for your thumbnails, then you'll be honestly unstoppable. The designers that I interviewed were in unanimous agreement that Photoshop is the best tool to make your thumbnails. I personally use Photoshop, but it's also really expensive if you don't already pay for Adobe. So I've linked a bunch of free and low cost alternatives alternatives in my Discord server, which you find below. Once you've chosen a tool to create your thumbnails, all four designers agree that it's important to get a basic understanding of your software before you start. YouTube is a great resource for just about anything, and if you're using Photoshop, Adobe has a wonderful YouTube channel with so many helpful videos. The same is applicable to just about any mainstream piece of software, and likewise, all of the free and low-cost alternatives to Photoshop. To get better at making thumbnails, practice makes perfect, obviously, but it also might help you to try and remake existing thumbnails in your your software of choice. Getting feedback from other designers is also crucial to improve. To meet other YouTubers and thumbnail designers, a few of the designers that I interviewed described networking as the key. I'm always networking with people and it's made a lot easier due to the success of my channel. However, you may not have this exposure quite yet and that's fine because
because there are tons of ways to network that I talk about in this video on my channel. So pop it open in a new tab to go watch it later. But what if you want to be like me and hire people to make your thumbnails? Out of all the designers that I interviewed, about 80% I found via Twitter and the other 20% came about due to a mutual connection with another YouTuber or designer. So this means that you should set up a Twitter as soon as possible and interact with people in the YouTube space to make connections and find designers advertising their work. If you want to hire any of the designers mentioned in this video, then you can check the description for their contact info. Then once you've done that or created your own thumbnail, then you'll probably want a high quality video script to go along with it, which I talk about in this video. So give it a watch.